Greetings, prop makers of the world. We return for part two of the cannon build. And as you can see, it's coming along great. This week, we're gonna be building the top cannon part here. And it's a pretty straightforward setup with a little bit of aging done. But all said and done, this cannon is just such a great prop. And the scale is just, you don't get it until you put like, your hand on and you realize just how big this thing is. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the video. We have one more video after this, which is doing up all the trim, but anyways, enjoy. Hey everybody, I had a multitude of audio issues with this video. I'm hoping to have a fix for the next one. Regardless, I hope it doesn't interfere too much with your enjoyment. All right, we're heading into part two of the Canon build here. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is 10 inch Sona tube. Now, this comes in different measurements. You really have to pay attention to this. Sometimes it's got a line underneath, sometimes it's got an OD on the outside of it. This is 10 and a quarter to the outside of the cardboard and that's the one that we want you can go bigger depends on the cannon that you build you know you can go through and you can modify this plan somewhat as much as you want now from the end up here we want to come down 31.75 inches and we're going to put a mark in that's going to be the first part of where the cross support for the cannon goes through and I am putting it as a pass-through. I don't want to put it on the edge and run the risk of it breaking off because of the weight of the cannon. So this actually has to be done right now. The pi of the ray of the, the, the circumference of this tube is when you're using two ten and a quarter, the circumference is 32 inches. So 32 inches, well, 32.09. It's close to what you need. So all I did is taking it, I'm just gonna rotate this through. Now, I've used a ruler and tracing it around the outside, I managed to mark 16 inches, which was that mark, then came around the opposite side and did 16 inches as well. This 0 0.09 is whatever's left over and whatever distance I had because of the thickness of the pen mark. Then, using a square, if you have a drywall square, this really helps here because what you do is you put it across the top of the tube and it squares up the line going down so you know where you're going to end up. Measure down 31.75 again and then put in a cross at 31.75 and between those two marks. That pretty much guarantees you're as close as you need to be to get this carpet tube halfway through. Then this carpet tube is 4.5 inches. So I set my compass to 2.25 and drew the circle. Due to how the angles and everything work, it might be a tiny bit loose or it might be a tiny bit tight. If it's tight, fantastic. If it's loose, we can deal with it. We'll find ways to, to pretty much uh, compensate for that. So we're gonna go through. Now we're gonna cut these out. You want these to be as precise as possible because you, if we can have that tube friction fit, it'll put us well on the way to having a really strong, sturdy base for this can. But anyways, I'm gonna go cut these out and the next time you see it, I should have the carpet tube through and we'll talk about what we're doing next. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a horrible screw up, but you're going to learn from my mistakes. So I want to get rid of these lines on the, uh, on the Sona tube because it can show up pretty good when you're actually doing it. I put the mud down first, sanded, then painted. But what happened was when I sanded, I took the top layer of this off. And when I painted it, it absorbed the paint and flexed it up. So I had to redo it. So if you're going to do this, paint it first, then mud, then sand. It'll save you a whole bunch of time. But anyways, this is just a little step in order to make sure that these lines are nice and smooth so you don't actually see it. And a good trick with, this is just uh, drywall mud, and it's so thin, I'm not worried about it cracking because, you know, this, this tube is already pretty strong, and by the time I get all of the supports and the styrofoam on it, it's not moving anyways. But when you get this, and you're, if you're going to sand it, one of the tricks you can do is once you've got it all done sanded, close your eyes and rub the actual surface. And it will tell you where the problems are without actually, you know, easily to find them rather than spending a whole bunch of time looking for them because with drywall mud, your eyes will fool you. Anyways, I'm gonna go paint this. We're gonna be back to start talking about putting some styrofoam on this. All right, we're getting into the next part of this build here. Now, you're gonna need 
a bowl from the dollar store. This is actually the same one that I used on the Alien uh, pod. I just really like the design of it. And this is 11 and a quarter inches wide and this kind of decides a lot of my dimensions for the back of the cannon. Now the next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to cut two 11 inch circles that are one inch thick. Chamfer the edges just slightly. You don't have to, but it looks good if you do. Then you're going to need, these ones are a bit harder. These are 13 inch circles and what I did is I've routed both sides of them to give them a neat look. And if you come over here, I'll show you how I do that somewhat safely because styrofoam jumps pretty good. This board here has got four screws on the other side. And all they do is I put the piece of styrofoam on, I flip it upside down, I push those screws in so it holds it in place and that way I can clamp the piece of wood safely and I can, you know, route the whole thing. Now what's gonna happen here is we need to get these to interface with this tube and this is thin you know you don't have a lot going on so you want to take this piece of wood that's made by taking a piece of flat wood sticking against there and using a pen on the inside marking a line on it then cutting it out you see how it's not exactly straight it's one side's longer than the other it doesn't matter the whole point is is we need it to match that curve right there and by matching that curve we're going to be putting a screw through here and a screw through here to hold this in place. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a, a point that we're able to attach this to. So this will end up coming from here and attaching onto here like that. Screws will go through and I'll actually glue it on. But this gives a really good strong base that I'm going to be able to then further attach all the pieces. Now how do we go about putting this actually together? Well, it's kind of like making a sandwich. We're going to be going here. We're going to be that's going to be the first plate on the bottom. The second plate's this one. The third plate is the inch again. The fourth plate is the second large circle, and then the final plate is this. As you can see, that's going to be the back of the can. You can see how quickly it just comes together, even rough. How cool it's going to look as a complete item and then that sits onto the tube and it gives it a really cool look. Same thing kind of happens to the front here. I, I'm still going to do one more thing because I ran into a tiny problem on the bottom. Now these I have to cut out the inside and like I did on the first part of this video where you cut it in half and you break it, that's how you get that middle part cleaned out because this is going to be the cannon barrel and we have to do it to both of them. But anyways, I'll be back after to talk about how we get all this done and attached and we'll take it from there. See you in a bit. All right, so just a quick update here. This is the back cap, and what I've done is using a small router bit that's about what is that, a, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I used this and I drew a circle on the top. Then, using the bit, I just cut in as close as possible. You know, it's we're gonna have some stuff to clean up here, but that's okay. Until this, when this lid goes on here, it has a gap to sit into. And the reason behind that is I want to make sure that this gets secured well because there's a bit of torque on the back of this and I don't want that gap to cause me problems. So I'm going to be gluing this in and then I'm also going to be using some caulk right there and we're going to fill it all in as much as possible to get all the lines looking really good. I just wanted to show you that before I moved on. All right, a quick update. You can see now we got everything on. now. After I stuck all these together with Gorilla Glue, I used some silicone caulk to fill in these gaps. And what happens, it just smooths it out because when you have a cannon, the, the whole unit was actually, I believe, forged, not forged, but um, cast. So you don't end up with smooth lines in a cast as much. There's always, there's never a gap. It's, it's a one type item. Back here, I did the same thing. I attached the, uh, I put a bead of caulk down in the center, pushed the bowl on top, and then caulked it on the outside. What it does, it pretty much holds this bowl in very securely without it coming out. Once it dries, it'll be completely secure. Now, um, if you want to, I drove a shish kebab skewer from here down to here. Just so once the glue dries, you have a bit more lateral strength. It's not completely necessary. This is funny. This thing is so balanced that if I let go of it here, 
it keeps on returning back to complete neutral almost. So now, listen here, Canon. Now here, I'm gonna hold with my knee. Same thing. This time I used a four inch screw. If you don't have access to a four inch screw, you can put an extra one inch plate here. So you have something to glue to and then you have something to do drive shish kebab skewers into. And then this one I glued on the inside like so. And then I used some toothpicks that I pushed in at an angle to hold it in place while the glue dried. Is there anything hiding in there? So that's where we are now. Next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing the details along here. There's some banding that I'm gonna be putting on today. And then I might do a design here. I'm not sure yet, but regardless, just wanted to bring you up to where we are. No, I also gotta build the, the uh, EVA foam caps for this at the same time. So just wanted to bring you up to uh, speed. The next time you see this, there should be banding on here and it might be painted. So I see you in a bit. And we return and we're continuing on the exciting adventures of Mr. Cannon. I shall call it Ethel. So um, here you can see the wood is on the inside and this band here is a two inch piece of quarter inch EVA foam chamfered one side and this is to cover those screw holes and it just makes it look cool. Coming down, this is a two inch piece of EVA foam with a one inch piece of EVA foam chamfered on top. Now, a good little trick here is I used um, contact cement to get these on. I tried hot glue, contact cement, and spray glue to see which one worked the best. By far, the contact cement was it, but there's still some caveats because this is quite the curve for this to wanna pop off of. If you're using uh, the exercise mat, be sure to take that surface off the back. If not, nothing sticks at all. That stuff's the bane of my existence. Anyways, we're gonna continue down. Second band, same. Third band, the same. Oh, and before I forget, you can see that all of the bands have been caulked on both sides, which took forever and made me dizzy. So we're gonna come down, and then the final band down here is once again a two inch band with a half inch chamfer, and this is specifically, once again, to hide those screw holes so the whole cannon doesn't look like it has anything holding it together. And I've got a small weight issue, as you can see here. Ah, I'm pointing to a weight, and I said there's a weight issue. I, I'm, my cannon's front heavy. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop a sandbag or a bean bag down at the bottom here to keep the weight down. But while I'm working on things, this is where it is. Up here, I'm trying to keep the paint off of my dome because I have to go assemble the last two pieces this morning. Anyways, I just wanted to bring you up to task here I'll be back later. All right, so we have got everything put together. I just wanted to go over this back part here. This was built, so I put down my bottle of caulk. This was built using one of these from the dollar store. I took a drill and I took out that entire backside and then using a large Christmas ball, I put it in. My joint here could have been a little bit better, but you know, for what it is, it's good enough. And then you just glue it onto the back of the bowl using hot glue and then I just siliconed, I caulked in the areas here just to make sure it looks good. And you can see down here, I did some more caulk just to make sure everything holds in place beautifully. Now, this finish here, I always worry about styrofoam being eaten apart by spray paint. I think I've come up with a solution. When I was working with the caulk, I noticed you normally with uh, caulk, you wet it down, so you end up with a nice smooth finish. But I noticed that even after I wet it down and let it go, where it ended up, where I, you know, it was just a very, very slight film, when it dried, it was like slightly sticky. So I did a test with a piece of styrofoam, and I found that if you take this stuff and you pretty much mix it with water and, you know, stir it around with a toothpick until you get the consistency of white glue, you paint that on here, it goes on beautifully. It dries gloss just as a heads up, but it's fully paintable. So it's an amazing solution for getting styrofoam protected. It's gonna be my go-to from now on. It's amazing and that stuff is cheap. So you can do a ton and you can protect your styrofoam. So what you do is the first step you do is you protect the styrofoam with the, uh, with the silicone caulk or the silicone uh, acrylic caulk and then you paint and you end up with a really good solution. Anyways, this was all painted with an oil rub bronze, which looks more like iron in my books more than anything, but I liked the metallic sheen of it and it turned out so nice. Piece of styrofoam down there is just so it doesn't stick to my sawhorses. 
and you can see all on the inside here nice beautiful finish i wanted a bit rougher of a finish on here because it would not be the smooth after firing a couple cannonballs anyways this is where we are i'm going to go through i'm going to do a tiny bit of aging on this just to make sure it looks all pretty but after that i'm going to put it onto the base and we will be finished so i'll be back we arrive at the final destination everybody what a great build this has been so all I've done now is I've gone through and I've done a little bit of weathering, did a little bit of silver dry brushing and a little bit of brown. I apologize for the wind sound. It's pretty gusty out here. Anyways, you do it to what you want. You can even do this if you do it. This is a full bronze build. Oh, it's cold out here. You can do it as a full bronze build with some green uh, aging or you can do what I did, do it more of an iron with some rust. It's up to you or you can make it brand new as well. Regardless, you can see once the cannon's all together, how well it's coming together. Regardless, thanks so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the cannon build so far. We got one more, like I said at the beginning, to build. And then we're going to be moving on to the, whatever project we feel next. Regardless, uh, if you like the video, please hit the like. If you really like the video, hit subscribe. If you would like more of this weekly craziness, and it is craziness, man. Sometimes getting these props ready in a week is crazy wild. Regardless, have a good one all.